everyone, and welcome to another This Sporting Life. And thanks for joining us on an evening when too much sport will be barely enough. Look, later in the show, a mystery guest. Not many clues. Simply two. He loves awful, and he doesn't mind it both ways. That sort of gives it away, doesn't it? But uh, for a start, let's get a big man in his shorts out of his corner and swinging simply by asking rampaging Roy Slavin, what was the highlight of your week? Yes, HG. Welcome to the program. Here we've got a... What gladdens my heart, we've got here a young kitty with a big dead fish. That is Guy Yaffa of Randwick, who caught this uh, 289... Count up, 289 kilogram blue marlin 35 kilometres off the coast of Sydney. And I love seeing that sort of thing. Kitty's out there killing big fish. Roy, simply, you know a lot about marlin fishing. You've tooled around in the tinny with the 18-foot tinny with a couple of Evan Roods up the back. You've dropped a line out 35 kilometres off the uh, east coast of Australia. What's the secret to bagging a big blue? Patience, I think. Yes? Patience. You, you, you're blue marlin, or you're bluey. It's a surly, haughty, arrogant sort of fish. And uh, it tries to, look, you cannot let a marlin think it's on top of you. So you, you might spend six, eight, ten, twelve hours just there with the bloody big stupid blue thing on the tug. But if it gets away, it'll tell the other buggers and they're very, very hard to catch in the future. I caught one not so long back, and this is what really excites me, is catching a big bluey with an old hook in it. I remember catching one quite recently off the, uh, the coast of Sydney, or actually it was off the coast of Newcastle, and it had a hook in it that I reckon was left there by either Bob Dyer or Lee Marvin. And that's what I like seeing. I like seeing one that's got away, bang, thinking it could get away with it, and I like nothing more than bringing it in, bonking it on the head, hanging it upside down and having a photograph taken with it. I must say, it does my heart gladden my heart to see kids still pulling them out. I mean, we had that Nancy Well, there aren't boy, that many left. Well, uh, Donnie Burrows yeah. on the show talking about fishing and then letting them go. I love seeing them dead because, as Roy points out, they, once they get a taste of freedom, they're gone forever and they're telling other fish all the time. And in the end, they'll be laughing at us out there in the Pacific, won't they, Roy? Yeah, well, your blue marlin is bloody well laughing at you half the time. That's why I like... Look, you can't eat them. Hopeless eating fish, your blue marlin. But there's nothing more attractive than looking at a den. With that thought, let's go to our street. Yeah. Roy, whenever I come to the Golden West, I love to get the car out and tool down Hay Street and turn left into Rockaby Street, Subiaco. There's something magical about this area. I don't know, as we approach it, the vibe just oozes out. It's tremendous. People standing around doing nothing, nothing to do, nowhere to go except stand around on corners and wait for lights to change. Now, and now, here, here we, we go. go, round into Rockaby. And we might be able to find a park here and see a lot of local identity out and about doing their shopping and what yeah. comes naturally. Yeah, all right. Here we go. So here we go. Look at right this bloke coming down here with a haversack. Right. Is yeah. that Kim Hughes? Is that a Kim Hughes look alive with the glasses on and the haversack? Well, listen, if that bloke, Kim Hughes, Kim Hughes can give us a call by the end of this program saying who he is uh, and where he was and where he was and where we saw him and where we saw him. He wins He's a big, for a big, big, big bloody prize. He gets the um, shirt, shirt, the he dark gets brown, dark brown, cassettes. He's ahead, and he gets national and international, international recognition. recognition. As does this person up here. Now, this person reminds me oh. a lot. Um, she was here. What? Adriana Exanides. Adriana Exanides with her hair coloured dark. Well, because she's in Mufti over here yeah, in the west. She's she would be. be. She's over here on a fling with yeah. baby John Burgess. Yeah. And this bloke in the blue shorts. And this bloke with the blue shorts and the blue shirt. Dead set ringer for Troy Eugle of the West Coast Eagles. Yes, that is Troy Eugle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at that walk. And if you, <laughs> if you can that tell walk. us what he's got in that bloody bag that he's carrying, then he's in for a prize as well. So all of those three, dark browns, shirts, shirts cassettes. Cassettes, national, international recognition. But that's Rockaby our Street. Rockaby Street? Yeah, Rockaby Road, yeah. our street. CBRK, WA. Yeah. But, gee, there's so many more other streets in the world, boy. Yeah. But I can't think of one as good as this. No, nor can I. Not off the top of my head. Not now. Jump in my car. I want to take you home. Yes, welcome back to this body life. Look, I try to keep these things in perspective, but I can't. There was a farce on the Gold Coast yesterday. It was described as an indie car classic. It, I believe the world is laughing at Australia at the moment. We can't seem to drive big bloody cars round in circles without buggering it up. Roy, and I'm 
too far. I know, look at makes Roy feel sad as yeah. well. Mm, mm. You've got some footage here of it. Let's go to that footage and have a look. Roy, take us through it. Let's have a look at the uh, IndyCar. Look at this. Uh, it was an absolute bloody circus. Here's Nigel Mansell coming up behind the old Andretti bloke and Arrivederci Mario. His final year came in third in the end, I think. Here's Nigel. We'll see Nigel going backwards in a minute. I bloody well hope so. Here's Nigel buggering up everybody. Here comes Nigel around the corner. This is Nigel Mansell. Here goes Nigel again with the slicks on when he should. Here he is going backwards. Look, what sort of what sort of organisation allows this to happen? A clown like that should have been taken off. Thankfully or mercifully, he only came. Here's Nigel in the red going into the bloody wall. Call him a driver, but I blame the organisers. Oh, yeah. I think Australia for so many years has been synonymous with motor racing. When you think of the relationship we had with, say, Sir Donald Campbell, many kiddies grew up thinking Sir Donald Campbell was Australian yeah. because of his, his relationship with Lake Eyre and the Bluebird and driving bloody well quickly along Lake Eyre. Marvellous bit of gear. When you think of the Blue Thunder Down Under in Adelaide, mm. synonymous with Australia, and now we've got the IndyCar, and bugger it, I don't care if it does cost the Queensland government $18 million a year flush down the bloody toilet or in the pocket of Mario Andretti or his stupid half-baked son or that clown Mansell that just comes out here with a wheelbarrow into which 18 bloody million dollars from Queensland taxpayers is thrust in there. I don't care because I think Australia should be synonymous with motor car racing. Yes. When you think of the Ford GTHO1, when you think of the Tirana GTXU1, when you think of these marks, yes, it's because Australia and racing, it's a big country, a lot of roads, people love, sitting kiddies in particular, love getting in cars, driving quickly, and I love these sorts of events sponsored by brewers. Do you know what worries me most of all, though? The thing was delayed yesterday because of rain, and what happened at the end? They chopped ten laps of it because it's night! Is that any way to run a race? People go to these things, ladies and gentlemen, because they want to see people killed. The best place to see someone killed is these cars driving around in the dark or driving around in the wet. And don't tell me, ladies and gentlemen, that there weren't people racing yesterday who were wet weather specialists, who were night driving specialists, because they were, and they were denied a chance to prove they had what it takes. We'll be back with more life and more good ideas in a moment. Well said. From this sporting life, a tribute to Australia's Julian McMahon. The Julian McMahon Toilet. Hi there, Scott Fisher here, and I'm a wildcat. I'm from the States, I love America, I love basketball, and I love Perth. But I really love Australia, and I'm just wild about seafood. The Julian McMahon, it's great to sit on. On this sporting life, it's time to buy a few rounds of bullets and join Asia's leading masters of travel, H.G. Nelson and Roy Slaven with Our Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to Asia's finest city. Sure, it's a big wrap, but on our Australia tonight, we're going to prove it, because here we are at the city of Perth. It's a magnificent place. It's a place that beckons. It's a place that says, linger longer and learn to love it. And Roy and myself, over the years, have certainly done that. We love the Swan. We love the Darling Ranges beyond. But this magnificent city crouched here on the banks of the Swan. Sure, it was just a swamp all those years ago before Alan Bond came and stuck a big hole and put a bit of money in it and watched it grow. But now it's blossomed into a fantastic city, Roy. You know it better than anybody else in Asia, I believe. Yes. Arguably, you know it better than anybody else in Asia. Take us through it. Yes. What are the highlights here in Perth? Well, if you look at it historically, HG, I think it was about 1829 when Governor Stirling decided that this would be the place, that Fremantle was just a jail, it was hopeless. This would be the place where would uh, mushroom an enormous, beautiful, magnificent city in the foothills of the Darling Ranges to which you referred. Now, if you go over the Darling Ranges, it's buggered. Nothing left, all dead, all totally dug up, salinated. It's just, a, it's just hell on earth. Yes. But this side of the Darling Ranges, it is heaven. It is superb. And look at some of the, look at some of the highlights here. You've got over onto the right. You've got the Wacker. Over here to the left, right down the bottom there, you can see a little toilet. Well, that building houses the plate which William Dampier first left off here, the first person or the first European to be here all those years ago in the 17th century. 
Uh, here you've got the R&I tower. There you've got another big bloody tower. And uh, over to the left here, well, it's a pretty dull sort of building anyway. But you do get a fabulous sense of city, of urban cityscape. That is Perth. Marvellous. So there it is, my very good friends, Perth, the jewel of the Indian Ocean. Roy, a fantastic city with so much to offer. Anybody wants to come for a day or stay forever? What a crap. Hey? But you couldn't think of a worse place to put a town, could you? I mean, at the no. end of a buggered continent. No. And a buggered Stupid. country. In a buggered <laughs> state. Yeah, and, right. You know, look at it. Laughing at us. And everyone who lives here. Triangles have three points. So does this sporting life. Roy, HG and you at home. Pointy.